very beautiful, but it can be very difficult. This is a good day here in Iceland. There is no weather warning, there is no issues, but visibility is still very low. And uh, if you look at the condition of the road, there is a lot of snow on it, and underneath the snow, it is very icy. So, you gotta ask yourself, before you decide to travel to Iceland and drive on your own, do you know what the fuck you're doing? Winter tourism in Iceland. This is a relatively new thing. And, uh, well, it basically started taking off in 2010 when we had this uh, volcanic eruption in Mount Eyjafjallajökull, which basically, well, for a short time period of six weeks, uh, uh, disrupted the air traffic all over the world, depending on where the wind was blowing. And uh, that made Iceland very, very famous in a negative way at first because, you know, we were fucking with people flight plans. That's, that's, that's not very popular. But because of the impact it had, we were on the news uh, all over the world for uh, a while. All of a sudden, people all over the world knew about Iceland, this beautiful island in the north, people that had never heard of, heard of us before. And uh, all of a sudden, there was a massive increase of people wanting to come here. And we, being these Viking businessmen we are, we saw the opportunity, we jumped on it. So we had a global campaign, marketing campaign, marketing Iceland. This was done by the state. This was done by some of the uh, major players in the tourist industry in Iceland. And they did very well. It, the, the, the tourism increased like 25 to 30% a year after that until 2019. And it just took us from being... Uh, like the industry from being a summer job for a few eccentric school teachers to a major enterprise. The, the biggest export today uh, with uh, over 2 million tourists a year. And the thing is with something that grows that fast is bound to have some uh, growing pains. But all in all, I think we did pretty good in keeping up. But you might ask yourself, is it a good idea to market uh, winter tourism in Iceland that far north where you can expect anything? Well, here's the thing. The weather here isn't really as bad and it, it doesn't snow as much as many people think. Because if you actually compare the latitude on where Iceland is to other countries with the same, on, on the same latitude, other countries like North Norway, other countries have much more snow. It's much, much colder. Why? It's because of the Gulf Stream. But the Gulf Stream is out of the scope of this video. But it makes the weather here a little milder. Some days are okay, but things can go sideways fast. Hurricane level winds can break the windows of your car. Now, let me clarify that. You're driving on the south coast. You're feeling good. You're wondering, why the fuck do we have this weather warning? And all of a sudden, you drive through a problem area. This wind funnels down the mountain and it just blows your window out. It breaks your fucking window. And all of a sudden, life is not that good anymore. 
And of course, we have them snowstorms and uh, and icy roads and road closure. Sometimes no snow, sometimes just heavy rain, crazy wind. You can really expect everything when you come to Iceland. We do have pretty good information available about everything, about road conditions, about the weather, if there's any warnings, places you shouldn't go to. And if you follow these instructions, you can avoid traveling in, in, in the most serious weather conditions and, and uh, you shouldn't, you shouldn't have any problems. But, but the, but the problem is that people just go anyway. They see a warning, they just, ah, you know. How bad can it actually be? And of course, they will find themselves in, in massive problems, you know, if they do that. For example, you know, you know, I have picked up a lot of people uh, through, throughout the years. And, I, re- I, you know, I remember this one guy a few years ago. I picked up uh, on the East Fjords of Iceland. I picked up a, a guy from Portugal. In the winter, he was traveling alone. The weather, were, the, the 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 road was open still, but maybe it shouldn't have been. But it, it was. Uh, uh, even there, there was a weather warning, and if he would have looked at it, he would have seen that. But um, I picked him up, and he was crying because you know he thought he would die there. There was no traffic. I had a big car. I was fine, but he had a 4x4. He said, I even have a 4x4. I don't understand. But let me, let me, let me explain one thing about 4x4s. You absolutely want to do that. When you go to Iceland, even in the summer, 4x4, because it is so much better. But occasionally, a 4x4 will only allow you to dig yourself a little deeper in the shit you're already in. For example, once I was traveling with a group, small group, to Tehtifos East. This is a place in the highlands, impassable in the winter. But I hired a specialized vehicle, an expert driver, to take us there. It was fine. We've done it many times before. It's all good. And uh, we do have a backup, a network of backup if something happens. But on the way back, there was a car stuck in the snow. And we were kind of surprised how far they actually got. But they had still not reached the point where it got really, really difficult. It was still a road just with a lot of snow on it, you know, but they hadn't reached the point where we had no road, meter steep snow and no way of seeing where you're driving. It was a young couple from Korea, obviously well-traveled. It looked like uh, they were influencers because uh, they had logos on their cars, some uh, sponsorships. But let me tell you one thing about influencers. They are the worst kind of tourists. Don't get me wrong, not all of them. Some of them are respectful. They do what they're told. They, they, they are nice. But, but some of them are just not. They just, they go wherever the fuck they want to go. They seem to have no, you know, the, the ego is so big that they're willing to put their life and others, search and rescue people that need to come and pick their ass up in danger for likes and follows. But back to the story. Before we pulled the guy out, I asked him if he didn't see one of the three gates, three gates that he had to go either pass or open, where it clearly was stated that the road was closed and impassable. I asked him, didn't you see this? And he said, sure, I just wanted to go. And then I just asked him if he didn't really care if him and his wife wouldn't survive this Iceland tour because they were completely stuck. They wouldn't have been able to walk back. The weather forecast for that night was bad and the following day, so at least for a day or two, there would be nobody there. No phone, not able to walk. I guess nobody knew where they were. And 
I just don't think they actually realized that we probably saved their lives. So far this winter, 2022 to 2023 has been bad. Just bad. Autumn was, well, the warmest autumn we ever had. Then came winter and we had the coldest period, the longest cold period we ever had. And uh, we have record snowfalls, massive storms, and the roads just been, some roads on the ring road have been, they've been closed a lot. It's been very problematic. One of the most memorable events this winter was last December, when the road to the airport was closed, well, two days, three days, more or less. We had a lot of people stranded at the airport and because of the road conditions, well, because the road was closed, getting food, getting staff, you know, maintaining uh, infrastructure at the airport was impossible. And some of these people were angry and, uh, and this tourist, for example, told us off. He said that uh, Icelanders should be better prepared for stuff like this. My counter argument is if you, if you're traveling to Iceland or to that part of the world in the winter, shit can happen. And if you can't deal with that, you should just go to Spain. Nobody died or got seriously injured during this crisis. This was an inconvenience. It was boring, you know, staying at the airport 24 hours or whatever it took with limited access to resources is boring. But, but the thing is, you can categorize this as a natural disaster, something nature brings and is beyond our control. In most cases, this is manageable. This blows over in a few hours. Very rarely it goes on for days, like in this case, but it can happen. I'm pretty sure that all the, the responders, all the people that are involved, they learn something from this incident and they will improve next time. But once in a while, there will be a major incident that the best thing we can do is just stay where we are, wait at the airport, at the hotel, wherever you are. But people do not want to wait. Some people, they just go out despite of all warnings. They paid for this trip and surely they're not gonna miss a thing. Sometimes when the roads are closed and people are stuck at the hotels, they decide, oh, let's just go for a walk. You know, let's go for a walk. Despite everybody's warning you against it, the hotel staff and, you know, here's the thing. If you don't care about your own health or your own life, why should anybody else? Seriously, why? If you do something stupid and you get lost and search and rescue team, they have to risk their lives to find your ass. Despite you had warnings before you left. This is selfish beyond words. People die in bad weather, in snowstorms. This winter we had a local woman. She was walking home from work, not in rural Iceland, in a small town. She was walking home from work. A route she took every day and she got lost and she died. Weathers like this are that serious. You should not play games here. It's very possible to have a safe, beautiful, wonderful vacation here in Iceland in the winter. Some people get very lucky. They get everything. They stay here for a few days. They get northern lights. They get ice caves. They get beautiful winter days. They get everything they deserve. Others, they get unlucky. They get storms day after day. They hardly can get out, out of the hotel. Is it fair? You know, it's not unfair. It's just a chance you have to take when you're traveling to a place like Iceland. This is unpredictable. So, be flexible, be smart, and be happy. And I'll see you in Iceland.